Thanks for staying with us. The NBAD governance protests have sparked a contentious debate surrounding the treatment and legal status of demonstrators alleged to be minors. During a court session, several individuals reportedly fainted, which the police claimed was a premeditated act intended to elicit public sympathy and backlash against law enforcement. Police PRO Muiwa Ogunjobi stated that according to the law, anyone over the age of seven is eligible to face court charges, stressing the legal framework's applicability. Meanwhile, the legal counsel representing the federal government refuted accusations of detaining minors, insisting that most of the accused are not only adults but also married men, challenging the narrative that underage participants are being unfairly prosecuted. This discrepancy has added complexity to the legal and public discourse surrounding the protests as various sites present conflicting versions of uh, the events and the identities of those involved. Our guest this morning is Elvis Asia, a legal practitioner. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Always good to be here. Okay. Uh, well, let's, let's just uh, look at the issue. People are being detained. Hundreds of them are detained. And uh, they have been asked to bring a bill of 10 million naira each. I don't know if their entire families can raise 10 million naira each for these people. But we're looking at the, the legality or, or otherwise of detaining these people for that long and uh, at that age. So let's begin with um, something that is... Uh, uh, that is unrelated to the age and all that, uh, that the fainting was premeditated. Let's just look at what you, your thoughts are about what the uh, police PRO said before we go into the legal matters. And quite frankly, um, I was very disappointed um, to uh, listen to the police PRO saying that, um, you know, that act and that the, uh, the fainting and whatever it is was a spectacle that was orchestrated. Um, but, you know, I mean, looking at those children, it, it is it's, it's clear to anybody, any um, objective person, any rational Nigerian, any reasonable Nigerian, that these children were badly treated. And that, you know, I mean, look at the way they were rushing the pool that, you know, um, councils and courts try to put together for them. Look at the way some of them were looking. Some of them were looking like skeletons. Some of them were looking like people that have not eaten uh, for, for, for weeks, if not months. These people have been detained for over 90 days. And from their looks, it was it's clear that they were badly treated in detention. And from their looks, it is clear that, you know, they, they, they haven't been given the necessary uh, feeding and a proper accommodation. And so I think that is what really matters, to focus on the fact that somebody, I mean, who would have faint in that kind of state? So it is very disappointing to, 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 to see the police trying to justify what is clearly uh, wrong. We know how the police treats uh, people in the, on, on their custody and, and detention. And from our experience, it is clear that this is, this is not just a possibility. This is actually, if you look at those children, the way they were looking. They were not they were not properly uh, attended to in any event if you look at there is a special uh, justice system for children under our laws and if you look at the child's right act a child is somebody under the age of 18. and so if you look at all those you know i mean those that are confirmed to be children within the people that were child they ought not to have been treated the same way they were treating adults by you know detaining them in prisons and places you know, continued places uh, for children. The, 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 the administration of justice as it relates to children under, that is that was thrown, was totally and legally thrown by the Child's Right Act. It's very clear as to how children should be treated in cases like this. You know, so it is, it is, it is very, very unfortunate to hear uh, an attempt, a very weak attempt at justification in this kind of circumstances. Okay, another statement that was uh, made was that uh, these people, some of them are married, even though uh, they are 17 and below. Most of the people uh, that we saw there are 17 and below. The, high, the oldest uh, was 17, uh, at least the, the ones that we saw. Others were about 14 and uh, so on and so forth. Now, even if they were married, does, a mar does marital status change 
the, the age or the treatment of anybody by law uh, when you go to uh, because someone is married you can be at, treated like an adult even though you married at 13 is that what the law states because that was also another statement that was made oh. by the legal counsel but first the, i think the, the first issue is where did he get his evidence that these people were married right um you know and just you know concocting statements like this in, in an attempt to um justify something that is clearly wrong uh, it's not really good uh, for the image of the Nigerian police and the Nigerian government. All right? So, um, you know, if you say they're married, what did you get the evidence from? In any event, um, in my view, under the Child's Right Act, being married is not an excuse. Anybody who is under the age of 18 has defined and defined protection under the law, either in criminal proceedings, in civil proceedings, and generally uh, about life. Those protections cannot be denied simply because you claim that somebody is married. You know, and I mean, the question is not whether or not they are criminally responsible. The law is very clear on that. The question is, are you treating these people appropriately the way, in the way and manner they should be treated within the confines of our law? If you have established that they were minors, what are you supposed to do? The, 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 the child's right are clearly um, you know, details what you should have done in the circumstances, you know, and even the way you should treat them. Detention is not even, it's, it's supposed to be the last option. You're supposed to look for alternative ways of keeping them. Either, you know, uh, with the parents, putting them in accommodation within the FCT, if they're available, and or uh, with various institutions that can take care of children. So the steps you should have taken. And when you now decide to put them in detention in the event that other options are not available or you feel that they are so dangerous to society that they should be kept uh, away from society, you must do so within uh, the, uh, the limits of, 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 of ensuring they are properly taken care of, they are properly they are well fed, and that the, the, they are brought to court within tenuously. You cannot keep children for over, over three months in, in detention. You know, and then you, you are bringing them to court after uh, 93 days. And because you think that they are married, because you think that they have children. Um, you know, we, we have so many cases of um, child marriage in this country. And if you look at the Child's Rights Act, it is clearly a, a, an act that is, shouldn't be allowed. So, you know, your perception of the marital status of these children is grossly material in, in, in when it comes to how you should treat them within the confines of the law. And so uh, that excuse it's to say it's, it's quite it's, it's unfortunate. And it, it's unfortunate that it's coming from a public officer who, who, who's uh, drawing salaries and other uh, entitlement on taxpayers' funds uh, to protect these children, to protect the country. The, 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 the justice system, the criminal justice system is not essentially for children. It's not meant to be punitive. It's not meant to punish them. It's meant to reintegrate them, rehabilitate them, and, you know, make them useful to society. You know, unless you can show that these children are so dangerous. I mean, what danger can you really see with these malnourished, um, you know, frail-looking children? So um, that excuse of them being married is, is not tenable in law at all. Mm. Uh, but according to law, now they have been kept for over three months and they were also still uh, threatening, I would say threatening, to keep them for another three months uh, because the, the hearing should have come or is supposed to come up in uh, January, even though now they are saying that it could be accelerated now, the hearing will be done. But um, normally, whether they were adults or not, were they supposed to be kept uh, for that long? The Constitution is very clear. It's unfortunate that in this country we have allowed, um, you know, what they call remand proceedings uh, to defeat the Constitution. I've had cause to write a very uh, well detailed article um, on this issue. You know, the remand proceedings, you know, is a process where they bring accused persons to court uh, to get some legitimacy for detention without trial. 
And my view has always been that even that has to be within the confines. There's a constitutional provision that you know um, you should be charged to court as quickly as possible. Being charged to court doesn't mean that you should just be brought to court and shown to the court, and then the court says, okay, we're going to be detained. And if you look at the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, provisions on remand are very you know, cautiously made you know, with, a, with a view to, a, to, to be in accordance or align with the constitutional provision. So there are time, there's a time limit that you can give. You can't detain somebody for, for 90, 93 days, even on, 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 under the remand proceedings. You know, there's a provision, you know, you, I, I think the first uh, 30 days, and then you now determine whether or not the person should continue to stay in detention. And so the court is supposed to look at the facts and circumstances of the case in determining whether to continue to uh, extend the remand process. But what we have had in, this, in, 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 in Nigeria is that the process has not been, uh, is not being abused. Magistrates are not looking at these processes uh, critically. They allow the police um, to violate the constitution by allow, giving them all these remand uh, orders and extending uh, uh, detention of people in, in, a, in a manner that's inconsistent with the constitution. You, you, you don't detain people to investigate. It is after you have carried out an investigation, you are sure that these people have committed an offense, that you, that you detain them. And on that basis, you should have what it takes already to charge them to court. So you can't keep somebody in, 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 in detention, get the court order to keep them in detention, and you say you are investigating the matter, and you keep the person for, for, for years. We have seen cases where people have been you know, on, on remand uh, for, for years. We have seen a lot of abuse. We have seen cases where powerful Nigerians will pay the police. I can say this. They will pay the police to go and get remand orders just to make sure that these people are not released on bail. You know? And this abuse continues uh, endlessly in our courts. And so I, I believe that, you know, within the powers that is provided for under the Child's Right Act, there, and there's a provision there that even says that magistrates and judges are supposed to be properly trained on how to handle children, particularly in, in, in situations like this. You know, generally, you cannot even give those kind of endless remand orders. You know, talk of children. You know, when the goal is supposed to be rehabilitation, the goal is supposed to be, you know, rest, you know ensuring that they are properly uh, uh, taken care of. You know, they don't even know what they're talking about, really. You know, so uh, quite frankly, the process where people are kept in detention for this long is not just unconstitutional. It is it is violates the fundamental rights of Nigerians. It violates, you know, the international obligations of Nigeria to ensure that you know we keep to the terms of the rule of law and justice in our society. And it is hoped that you know judges, particularly magistrates, will be properly trained to understand that you don't even it is not compulsory that you must remand people. When the police bring uh, applications for remand, you're supposed to look at it. You're supposed to ensure that there is a probable cause, there's a basis for it. And then in doing so, you also you, are, you must ensure that there is there are timelines. It's kind of just regarding remand order, the way we are going now. And detaining people endlessly, and you know, in the process, denying them of their constitutional right to be tried within a reasonable time. Mm. It's absolutely wrong, and um, it is hoped that with this, the Attorney General, a man who I feel, you know, is a very, is a great lawyer, would you know, um, put up policies to checkmate these excesses by the police in connivance with our with with, 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 with magistrate courts across the country. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't understand why it is that way. Um, but the, the police seem to be playing the script of the federal government. And if the attorney general is also working for the federal government, I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe uh, make these children suffer for a long time, and then the federal government will come and say, OK, we give them pardon, and then uh, get the accolades of people who will see that you, they have done well. But I'd like you to also uh, tell us what you think about the bail conditions that they gave them. We know that. Uh, just recently, someone threatened the, lives of, the life of another person, telling him that it will make the person disappear without any trace. Uh, that's a threat to life, but he was, he was given a bill. He never went behind bars anyway. He was given a bill of 500,000 naira, even when he is a sitting uh, National Assembly member. But these children, who maybe even on that day of the protest hadn't had anything to eat, have been given a bill of 10 million naira each. I'd like you to, to look at this bill condition vis-a-vis -vis the, the crime, the supposed crime that they committed and how they have been treated so far. Uh, well, I mean, the bill conditions are other supports. And so um, 
as a lawyer, I, I will not be able to use this platform to begin to challenge the order of the court. But I will be able to speak generally about bail conditions, you know, and bail conditions are not meant to be uh, punitive. They are not meant to be uh, more like uh, a detention order. If you give a bail condition that, you know, the accused person is not able to appeal, you have already jailed the person. And the presumption of innocence that is guaranteed by the Constitution is essentially free. And so uh, it is hoped that, you know, judges would uh, reconsider the way and manner conditions are dished out, particularly to vulnerable Nigerians and those who have no means uh, to perfect these big conditions. And I had mentioned earlier that, you know, within the con for, for the children uh, that are involved in this particular case, the Child Rights Act has, you know, copious provisions that should guide every court in whether it's big big terms, whether it's, uh, you know, so, um, you know, the courts are supposed to look at that. You know, those, what we have, what we have seen in our, from our court is that particularly as it relates to children, I suggest that, you know, our judges uh, have not properly looked at the Child Rights Act, you know, as it relates to children. You cannot, for example, uh, give a, a big condition um, that suggests that the ch a child should be detained in the custody of the police. You know, you are supposed to have explored other options. Look at the where, 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 where else the children can be kept. It would, you know, you have to serve the purpose. Uh, 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 Charge has the system, which is uh, rehabilitation, and not to be kept with the IROT that people say is an abattoir. You know, in in legal pal in a local parlance. You know what that means? That a lot of funny things happen there. You don't, don't want to keep children there. And looking at these children, having we kept them for over 90, 93 days, you can see the results. And so it would have been expected that a judge would look at, you know, uh, the Child Rights Act in with a view to ensuring that, you know, there's a balance. And then, apart from just giving the big, because if you give big terms that if, if, if an accused person cannot fulfill, whether a child or otherwise, you have defeated the whole purpose of, because the whole purpose of, of bail is to ensure that the person that is being charged would come back to court to answer to the charges that have been filed. It is not meant to punish the person already, even when trials. What if you now eventually determine at the end of the day that this person uh, is wrongly accused, is wrongly charged? And so after spending over 100 days and more in detention, and would that just be a waste? You know, and another thing I, I think people need to also understand that they have, they, need to, they, can, they can actually bring an action against the state. You know, for wrong for for, for wrongful prosecution is in, in, in civil cases. You know, you can't just keep somebody in detention for over for months, and then at the end of the day, you now find out that the person is not really guilty of what uh, the person was charged with. You know, so for me, uh, it is absolutely not right. Um, there's there is a need for some training, particularly when you are handling cases that has to do with children. Um, I, I want to make a comment, for example, on what happened in, what happened in this particular case where I, was, I, I read from the papers that the judge at some point when he saw uh, children fence and all that uh, went back to the ch chambers. That only should have, you know, given a hint, an indication that, you know, some form of intervention was necessary by the court. I expected to see, for example, directives and orders on how these children should be treated in, in wherever they are kept, you know, by the, by the court, by many looking at the way they were, by many looking at them. So all of this, you know, we weren't done. And rather, we are giving bail terms that it appears to be very difficult uh, for them to fulfill. And then you are joined by that to January. So if they're not able to fulfill the, the, the bail terms, then that means they're going to be in detention for another, another two months or, or more. And then the question that you now ask is, <laughs> I mean, what justice are we really talking about here, particularly as it relates to children? So I'm really very concerned about the kind of bail terms that we see vis-a-vis uh, -vis the bail ter base terms that are given for people that have stolen billions, people that have uh, defrauded the state, you know, in some of these fraud cases and corruption cases by EFCC, we see the kind of bail terms that are, that are given. And these people can easily fulfill it. But how can a child, you know, uh, but, you know, there are options open. They can apply to vary these terms in the event that they are unable, unable to fulfill it. Okay. Uh, as we wrap up, I'd like you to just paint a picture of what this looks like in the international community. How would the international community view our judicial system and uh, legal system generally? 
it's it's really very bad. You know, it's it's you know what it suggests is that we don't really understand the concept of justice. Uh, we don't our rule of law uh, uh, talk. You know, it's all, it's just all talk. It also suggests that we are not honoring our international obligations as it relates to uh, the ch to children because you know there are international obligations under 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 the child's uh, right conventions uh, to which Nigeria is signatory, uh, which really provides specifically that children should be treated in a special way uh, in proceedings like this. And it, the picture that was painted from the court of children so looking so malnourished, uh, looking so frail uh, after being detained for this for for, for over ninety three but ninety three days, uh, suggests that uh, suggests to the international community that we are not uh, we are not we are not committed to the rule of law. And it also really casts serious doubt on the criminal justice system of, of this country. Um, you know, how do you allow remand orders to allow people to stay this long uh, in detention? Uh, you know, so all of these really casts, you know, serious, uh, it paints Nigeria in a very bad light. In fact, it paints the government in a very bad light. And if you look at it, you know, what we are seeing now, this idea and attempt to muscle up people who want to protest hunger, people who want to protest corruption, this attempt to, you know, uh, uh, prevent people from protesting. You, don't forget that even the courts have assisted the, the politicians in that regard by granting orders and limiting people to a particular location to protest. Somebody's hungry, and then you say, somebody's hungry in Badagri, and you say you must come and protest in Freedom Park. Orders like this paints us in a very bad light, and it suggests it, it, that the government is failing. It's only a failing government. It's only a government that is out of touch with the people that will resort to this kind of tactics. Instead of you to fix the problems that people are talking about, protest is part of the governance process. Protest is part of the way and manner the people expresses their concerns and, and desires to, to those in government. And so, All if right. you cannot accommodate it, it simply means that you, you don't understand what you're doing. And the international community is not really it's, it's seen us as uh, more like a pirate na nation, that a, a, a nation that has no regards for the rule of law. This is not really good for us at all, and it affects. People coming to invest in a country, it affects foreign investment, it affects the way we are, Nigerians are perceived globally. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we do hope that we will clear this picture and make it a better one, but we'd like to thank you, uh, Barrister Elvis, for coming on the show. As usual, we were glad to have you. Well, we were talking with Barrister Elvis Asia. He's a, she, he's a legal practitioner and he was talking to us from uh, a do state. We were looking at uh, the detained minors uh, that were part of the NBAT governance protest and how they're being treated. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at something else. Stay with us.